All right, hi everyone. Today I'm going to run you through a bunch of updates I've been making to some of my projects recently. Some of these are free, some are paid, so let's take a look. Taking a look at the EasyBPY project, which if you don't know, is a module for simplifying the use of Python in Blender. We have added several versions since it was last mentioned on the channel. Most recently, control for object constraints was added in 1.0 and extra argument contexts were added for 1.1 for modifier functions, letting you write useful commands like this. If you weren't aware, I've set up an official page for the project at curtisholt.online slash easybpy. This is probably the best place to start for newcomers. It's designed to be visually pleasing, basically the opposite of regular documentation. It tells you where you can get the module and how to set it up. It will also run you through the main features with simple examples you can try for yourself. So if you are interested, this is a good place to start. EasyBPY is available on GitHub and Gumroad for free, and Blender Market for $1. As for documentation, there are a few places to keep track of information. The GitHub repository contains an info.txt file, which has a list of all available functions, but we also have the GitHub wiki, which lists the functions in slightly more detail with their associated arguments. But this is a work in progress. But let's face it, no one wants to write documentation, which is why I've written the main webpage as an introductory guide. Of course, if you're new to this project, then it'll probably be worth watching the original video and or reading the associated blog post where I talk more about the idea behind the project. This is a long-term project and many more features will be added in the future, but I'll be sure to keep you updated. Moving on to the Hold Tools project, this is a free add-on I made a little while ago with a bunch of features to help with my workflow. I've made a couple of changes over the last few days. First of all, when changing the global emission values, the principled BSDF shader will be considered in addition to the regular emission shader provided the given string in the node name includes field is contained in the name of the shader. As well as this, a new category has been added to the cleanup panel for material functions, and I've put one in there for now called remove unused slots, which will purge any unused material slots on the currently selected objects. This is also available as a pre-made function in EasyBPY, just in case you wanted to write your own cleanup scripts. This is just a small update while I'm working on multiple projects at once, but I have a long list of extra features to add to this project in the future. I appreciate all of the people that have been leaving feedback requests on the previous Holt Tools videos asking for specific features. Every time I receive one, I will add it to a list of things to try out, so feel free to keep sending me requests. The add-on is first and foremost a tool to help me with my personal workflow, but user requests are a good opportunity for me to explore new workflows and also see how I can make the add-on more useful for other people. Like EasyBPY, Holt Tools is available on both GitHub and Gumroad absolutely for free and Blender Market for $1. Navigating different web stores can be tricky, so to help people find all my projects, I have previously created a section on my website called the Content Directory, which contains a comprehensive list of every created project up to this point. It will be continuously updated as more are released. Of course, for the Patreon links, you will need to be logged in with an account signed up to the appropriate tier to access these specific resources, but everything else should be available for everyone to view. Since we're talking about the website, image branding for some resources has been updated to make them more visually consistent. This is part of a phase of reorganizing the business to prepare things for the future. Eagle-eyed followers may have also noticed something similar happen to the thumbnails on the YouTube channel page. In terms of other YouTube content available, episode 39 of the Blender Nest podcast has been uploaded where a bunch of us Blender creators discuss the nature of making content for YouTube. I share my thoughts about moving my focus away from YouTube to spend more time making resources for people and putting a larger emphasis on Patreon. As well as this, we talk about how human memory works, as well as the stock market and cryptocurrency bandwagons. I've stepped down from editing duties to take a more managerial stance on Blender Nest, and we should soon be able to open up to more community members. So if you're a creator and you're interested in taking part in discussions, then feel free to let me know. All episodes are available to watch at youtube.com slash blendernest. As for paid products, I've made a small change to the modular metals package, including extra vector inputs for the master versions of the copper and iron nodes. This is just a small correction as I'm saving most of the larger changes for version 2 of the modular metals pack which I don't have a release date for yet, but it is coming in the future. I also made some significant changes to the ambient grunge node that have not been added to the public version of the product yet, so you can expect to see that happen at some point in the future. I'll just need to sit down with the original development files for the modular metals package, extract the new version of the node, clean it up and then prepare that to be published. As for Patreon, I've updated my rigged base characters resource pack with a new model, which is a rigged human male. This has been an on and off project for a while, human anatomy is not my speciality, but I think I've got something usable now. On top of this, all characters in the package now have two types of rig available, one using inverse kinematics and one that's just a basic bone layout. Note that these meshes have been created for use in artwork, they are not designed to be game ready, meaning that they haven't been retopologized, but you can use them as a template and modify them however you like. This package is available on the $5 tier, which gets you exclusive access to my collection of private resources. 
All in all, I'm trying to focus on making more useful things that people can use. More resources, more tools, and more fun stuff to get people engaged and excited about creating their own content. So hopefully you'll be seeing more of this over time. Okay, that'll do it for now, I just wanted to make this quick video to keep you updated on some changes. All relevant links can be found in the description if you want to check these projects out. So thanks for watching everyone, please stay safe, and I'll see you next time.